Hello, hello. Good afternoon. If you can hear me, um, just let me know. Just let me know if you can hear me. Hey, Philip. Hey, Zoran. How are you doing? Just wanted to do a quick um, sound check. So if you can hear me, please let me know. They were going through the strategy clinic. Let me just see. I think it's a bit off. Oh, okay. Great, great. Um, I've just enabled the chat again. So if you can help me try it out one more time. Just because, you know, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the chat. So I just wanted to make sure that that works. All right, super. Thanks for that, Zoran. Um, how are you doing? Just wanted to see how, how are you doing? How's your trading been going? I give it a couple of minutes as um, everyone else comes in, but let me know. You know, we've had quite a little bit of volatility in the markets. So, you know, have you been trading well? Have you been um, so far so good? I see that you've been turning up for the session, so that's good. Um, I, you know, I would like to find out more about how you trade just so that I can figure out, you know, if there's anything that I can help to maybe tweak your strategy or tweak your approach a little bit differently. Let me see, let me see if there's anyone else. Okay. Just double check something. I'm having a little bit of issues with the system at this point. Just give me a moment. Uh, hey, Philip, how are you doing? Let me just check something at this point. Um, all right, seems like it's good to go. Fantastic. All right, all right. Philip's replying as well, so I know the chat works. Um, let me know. Let's see what else can we go through today. All right, um, if you are ready, let's get started. Okay, now. Okay, so let's go. Um, as usual, oh wait, I saw something come up. Okay, as usual, what we want to do is get the disclaimer out of the way. All right. Just jumping in a little bit, just been a bit messy with the slides at this point okay so you can see my screen all right i just wanted to do a quick disclaimer just to make sure that you guys know um, i will be looking at some possible trade ideas i'll be sharing with you my views my um, thoughts about the markets 
So remember that any information, context, opinions expressed in this presentation and the following slides are those of presenters myself, not necessarily those of Vantage. So if you are looking to jump into any trades, just make sure you take this as educational purposes, um, not constitute as investment advice or consultation on how a client should trade. Um, do your own due diligence. Again, I sound like I've been repeating this over and over, but always make sure that you remember to manage your trades, manage your leverage, your um, margins as well. You know, don't over trade, don't over leverage. All right. So with that said, let's get straight into it. Can you see my charts? All right. Again, let's bring up Forex Factory. It's quite interesting news that we've had over the last couple of days and also most recently. So you see my Forex Factory, all right, guys? Yep, fantastic. So thus this morning, all right, just this morning, I'm going through some news events from today and also yesterday. So I'll start with yesterday first. Uh, we saw yesterday New Zealand increasing their interest rates uh, 50 basis points from a 20 from a 2.5 percent to a three percent right so increasing interest rates 50 basis points to a three percent but what we actually saw with that was the kiwi dollar dropping right for a brief moment it shot towards upside but then it dropped i'll show you that onto the charts <laughs> and also um, that brought about some volatility on the Kiwi dollar. More importantly, it was 2 p.m. GMT plus 8. We saw the pound CPI number at 10.1%. It was a 9.4, expected 9.8, but came out at 10.1. So there was a bit of a surprise there with the UK CPI staying so high despite the Bank of England with their aggressive, relatively aggressive interest rates hike, right? So that actually caused the pound dollar to drop, right? A bit counterintuitive, a bit counterintuitive. We saw the pound dollar drop despite a strong CPI number because with such a high inflation and inflation still continuing to grow, interest rates continuing to go up from the Bank of England, the GDP for the UK has actually dropped, right? Gone into that negative range, that con that um, contractionary phase. So the UK seems to be running a risk of heading into a stagflation, right? A stagflation is when we see prices climbing, right? We see inflation climbing, but we actually see um, economic activity dropping. So that's a concern there, and that's what actually led to the um, pound dollar dropping. Okay, with that, what else we saw was the US retail sales number a little bit surprising there. I was expecting a good number, uh, but I didn't think it'd be that much better. So core retail sales was 0 0.9, right? It was revised from a 1%. No, I expected a minus 0.1%, but it came out at a 0.4. So a little bit of a surprise there. Retail sales month on month stayed flat at a 0%. Didn't have, had a very brief interruption to the dollar index strength, but then we saw dollar index continue to climb towards the upside. With all that said, Today has been a little bit quiet. Markets have been trading in somewhat of a consolidation in the broader view. If you zoomed it down to the small time frame, had a bit of a spike, but then it retraced very quickly. We had the FOMC meeting minutes early, early this morning at 2 a.m., right? FOMC meeting minutes today was um, actually a bit of a non-event because meeting minutes basically tell you what happened or details of what happened before, right? We know that the feds actually increase rates. The key takeaways from the meeting minutes, I'm not gonna make you read through the whole thing, um, but the key takeaways were that, this was the first one, um, that the further rate increases could have, or is expected to have 
a big impact on economic performance. Economic performance in terms of unemployment, right? Unemployment rate could start to rise and also possibly rate increases could cause a decrease in demand, right? A decrease in demand. But despite the possible side effects of further rate increases, the FOMC is still expected to continue with their path of rate increases because they want to bring inflation down from the 9.8% or I can't remember what the number was at this point, um, down towards their 2% two, two to 3% target range. All right. So with that, despite that possible hazard towards economic performance, the feds are seen are seeing interest rates hikes to continue until inflation eases substantially. Okay, so we're looking at further rate increases to come from the US. So because of all that, what we actually saw, I'll show you here onto the charts straight away. And there we go. On the dollar index, I'll clear that out. Clear that one out as well. It climbed, right? Last night, I'll show you this on H1 time frame first. Yesterday, the dollar index was trading slightly towards that 106.50 level. But with the news through the day, it pushed towards the upside. It went towards almost towards the 107 or almost hitting that 107 level, but retraced back down. Okay, no, this was today. Uh, let me see. Yesterday. This was yesterday there. Okay, so it climbed. It came down towards the 106 level and then it pushed up towards that 106 80, 83 level before it today retraced back down again. Earlier today, we saw a push higher, but now retracing back down. Just be extra careful on the dollar index. Why I say that is because going back to the H4 time frame. How I see it is that it's been trading right across, right? Let me see, where's my lines? There it is. All right, it's hit that level of 106.96, and it seems to be resisting that points over and over again. We've already seen it happen once here. Again, came close at this point resisted and now recent most recently resisted again so resisting those levels could show that we might see some um re well could see this continue to hold continue to hold that strength on the dollar index if it breaks towards the upside then we could see further strength towards that 107.50 level you can see that it's tested here and again or if it breaks above that then we can see further upside but the main thing now is to focus on whether the dollar index can break above that 106.96 level towards that 107.57 level okay so looks like it's going to resist what we have to do is look for any news tonight or any further hawkish sentiment tonight to push the dollar index towards the upside. So I'll also do that and show you that just looking at the tails, ignoring the tail a little bit there, or if that's the case, we can also see a bit of a upward trend towards the dollar index, right? You can see a bit of a pattern forming there, a pattern up pendant towards upside if it does break lower we could see it drop but i think that with the current hawkish view on the dollar with the current hawkish view on the dollar index um, i'm looking for this to come down test before breaking above that level to push towards that 107.58 level Okay, so that gives us a bit of a hint of what we could be expecting, a bit of a consolidation with possible further upside on the dollar index. And with that, I want to show you is also the Kiwi dollar, All right? So 
I was doing this analysis before, and this is actually quite interesting for those of you. Actually, do you guys trade um, much of the news? When you see a news event happen, do you actually trade that? All right, because what I would show you here is that yesterday, right, is that yesterday as the news event happened for the Kiwi with increasing interest rates on the 13th of April, they increased it by 50 basis points, right? And you can see on the 13th of April, if I did a vertical line there, you can see that on that news release, right, I'll do one before just so that's easy to see. On that news release, we actually saw despite an interest rate increase, we saw the Kiwi dollar trade towards the downside. Okay. And again, on the 25th of May, so on the 25th of May, okay, I'll move it one again, I'll move it one across. Despite a 50 basis point increase again, we didn't see a big upside on the Kiwi dollar. We actually saw it shoot up, shoot back down and trade still within that somewhat of a doji fashion there. And then lastly, on the 13th of July, right, I'll do it one before again. You can see that it also shot up, shot back down, and still traded in that doji there. So a little bit different, or a little bit of a different reaction there on the Kiwi dollar with the interest rates decision. You know, despite a rate increase, we've seen the Kiwi dollar um, continue to trade with no significant upside despite that 50 basis points increase. What we actually saw here on to the 17th of August, similar fashion, right? In this case, instead of having a doji, we actually saw it trade towards the downside um, on the Kiwi dollar. So what you can see is that predominant trend, that big downward trend actually has a bigger impact on the Kiwi dollar compared to the actual news of rate increases to push price towards the downs uh, towards the upside. That was an analysis I was thinking of before the news. I actually caught that downward move. Right now, Kiwi dollar coming back to the H4 time frame trading at that 0 0.6270 level looks like an area of consolidation, right? You can see that it's traded around this area here again over the last couple of times. Right now, anticipating that it's going to trade within this area, no clear move, but what I'm actually looking for is if price can break below that level, right? If price can break below the 6260 level, okay? Why this level? Somewhat because it started at this point, but we actually saw it testing, testing before bouncing back up. If price can break from this point, I would say that the next possible target level would be 61, about 6197. All right, 6197 before we could see significant downside. I think that the Kiwi dollar is likely to hold at this level, right? Kiwi dollar is likely to hold at this level as the dollar index retraces. You can see as the dollar index retraces towards the downside, that's likely to push the Kiwi dollar back up a little bit. Okay, so I think that we could see it bounce back up maybe test that 0 0.63 level again before turning back down, gain some strength before turning back down towards that 6197 level. All right. So that was the Kiwi dollar to look at. Another one to pay attention to was the pound CPI. That was yesterday. We saw the UK CPI at a 10.1%. So the UK CPI, I'll clear that out so it's easier to see. 
yesterday as that news got released you can see that it got released at 2 p.m gmt plus eight as that news got released the pound dollar just went straight down towards that 0 0.1.2040 level okay i was just thinking of this before i jumped onto the call is that the pound dollar still struggles to break below that 1.20 level right still struggles did once it tested once on the 5th of august came very close on the 16th and again just today it came very close before bouncing back up quite strongly so psychologically that's a very strong level that's possibly going to hold for now one thing that it's also to consider is that we have this move towards the downside all right so i'll move the chart a little bit towards so i'll draw that line there like that so hey we might actually see we might actually see the pound dollar i think that we're still going to see the downside but with the way the dollar index is moving anticipating for it to sit there bounce around this level maybe come up test that diagonal resistance level before turning back down to test that 1.20 level again okay so it might sit there do something similar to that but to a lesser extent come up towards that 1.208 about 1.2080 level before turning back down below towards 1.20 i wouldn't i wouldn't be betting that price is going to break 1.20 i think it could come and test this point i would only be looking to sell down if it breaks below this 1.20 level um, towards the downside all right so makes sense so far does it make sense to you guys so far if price does break below 1.20 um, I would say the next downside level would be about oh, it's a bit too near there I would say it's about those tails there at 1.1920 so it could be you know something to watch be a bit patient on this trading is all about being patient is for that selling opportunity below 1.20 so 1.1980 about a 30 pip stop loss take profit immediate take profit about 60 pips a one is to two towards the downside on the pound dollar only if it breaks towards the downside of that 1.20 support level all right good stuff just check something there all right okay cool so with that what else do we look at retail sales number as i was telling you at 8 30 last night um, gmt plus eight we didn't actually see too much of a move on the dollar index all right this was at 8 30 where was it 8 30 there all right so it actually shot up came back down and still pushed towards the upside um, didn't do too much on the dollar index despite a little bit better than expected core retail sales number okay if you have any questions any charts or any particular trades that you would like me to look into please let me know or any you know trading strategy or thoughts that you would like me to look into please let me know as well today um, today of oh, fmc meeting minutes we actually saw at 2 a.m that brought the us dollar index down by hit that diagonal level before bouncing back up again okay without that diagonal level if we did it before that we would have just seen it test and bounce back up again so now as a revision so you know a way to approach your trades always look to revise your lines check your lines and revise to adjust your lines there okay now looking like the dollar index pushing possibly going to push back up and test that 1.107 level again 
with uh, the news today, employment data being released for Australia, employment data being released for Australia, bit of a surprise, right? I was watching this news, I was a little bit surprised that we saw employment change from an 88.4K expected, only a 26.5. Not a big change expected there, but we actually saw employment change decline quite significantly, minus 40.9K, right? So there's a bit of a surprise there. Um, and then unemployment rate dropping slightly from a 3.5 to a 3.4%. So a bit surprising there for the Aussie dollar, right? For the Aussie employment numbers, what we actually saw was the Aussie dollar this morning um, traded there. Where was it? Okay, that, that point there, just traded briefly towards the downside, came down further through the trading session, came very close or tested that 0 0.69 level before bouncing back up again. So no clear directions. Unfortunately, you know, if you're looking at it on the H4 or the H1 timeframes, today prices have dropped, bounced back up on the Aussie dollar. Same thing on the Kiwi dollar, it's dropped, bounced back up, still trading in a bit of a consolidation, very tight consolidation today. Um, pound, dollar as well. So I'll take that, take that away for now. Right, pound dollar as well dropped, hit that level, still sits in a consolidation. Euro dollar, tight, tight consolidation between that 1.0, almost 1.02 level and the 1.015 level. Right, trading in a tight consolidation. I think that it might break towards the downside but it's not ready yet. Um, just to show you a few more charts, just to highlight the point, US Swiss franc, again, consolidating, testing higher, consolidating at that 95, uh, 0 0.9525 level. So again, not clear, no clear directions yet. The US yen, consolidating at or just below that 135.50 level, right? It's hit, bounce back down, trying to climb back up again, still consolidating at that level, no clear directions. So what you should realize or notice here is that um, most prices or most currency pairs are consolidating are sitting right across, right? They're trading right across. It looks like, you know, two things can happen, right? Two things can happen. Either it's going to consolidate, especially in the US yen's case, either it's going to consolidate, hit that resistance level before turning back down, or break that 135.50 level towards the upside, okay? All the likely scenarios, same with the euro dollar, if it does break, I'm looking for it to break towards the downside. Um, Aussie dollar we spoke about before, possibly not a good trade idea yet. It's just in the middle of two levels. Kiwi dollar possibly to break towards the downside. But you realize that as I'm drawing the lines, as I'm doing that uh, brief analysis, we're expecting a lot of downside potential or rather we're expecting a lot of US dollar strength. It seems to be highly dependent on the dollar index breaking above that 106.96 level or 107 level to push towards that 107.57 level, right? So what are the reasons that could push it up? What are the reasons that could hold it? Look into the markets. Tonight, we do have one news, not a big news at this point. Um, the US Philly Fed Manufacturing Index was a minus 12.3, expected a minus 4.9. Might be a little bit of a better news, but not going to be a big price mover. All right, but tomorrow, you can see not a lot of news happening across the board. Okay, so not a lot of news happening across the board. With that, 
you know, sometimes no news is not a bad thing. No news is not a bad thing. It could lead to a continuation of the current sentiment. All right. So a lot of times, you know, or rather a lot of traders would approach me and say, well, if there's no news, how do we look at what direction? You know, is it going to change? Is it going to continue? What's going to drive prices? Sometimes no news, you're likely to see a continuation. That means if this pushes up, if it breaks above that point, you can be looking for further dollar strengths, right? Be a bit flexible with your trading approach. It doesn't always have to be um, fixed. You have some leeway to switch based on short-term sentiment. If price breaks towards the downside and you are happy to take on a little bit of a counter trend trade, that could be counter trend trade ideas. The next support level here on the dollar index would be possibly at about that 106.25 level. Okay, why, why I've just drawn it right across is you can see that it's supported several times here, most recently over the last couple, and then very recently tested, tail tested those points before bouncing back up. So I don't think we're going to see massive or significant downside on the dollar index. It could drop, bounce off this level, back up again, or it could break towards the upside above that 106.96 towards the 107.57 level. Okay, so be a bit flexible. I would say that in a strong dollar scenario, in a strong dollar scenario, I would be more keen on the euro dollar, right? Dollar strength, I'll be looking to sell the euro dollar down. If you're a little bit more aggressive, you could be looking at that 1.015 level as a place to sell down. If you're a little bit more conservative, I could say that about 1.013 or 1.014 level to sell down. Um, the next key, key level, we all know that, you know, I asked you guys previously as well, is the euro going to come down towards parity? Possibly. Okay, possibly. I see a question there, Zoran. I'll get to that shortly. Um, but I think that before it comes towards that parity level, we could see it test about that 1.0068 level or area as how it's tested there back in July. Okay. So one of the oh, question there is, you know, a challenge to understand the trend. Actually, let me ask you the question. What are you actually, um, what are you using to help you tell trend at this point? Or how are you approaching um, identifying trend at this point? Okay, as you answer that, I'll bring this up because I found this was a very good example. Okay, so one, re one way to identify or to help you identify trend, you know, you could either use the MACD, you could, you know, the moving average, you could be looking just at that overall view. But what I think could be a very good visual is channels, right? So you can be looking to, at this point here, just connect up a few lines, drag it down, shows you that short-term trend, right? Um, again, as we do this, towards upside, again, shows you that short-term upward trend. This point here, I would say it's moving right across, okay? So several ways to approach it is, hey, you could use trend to tell you or try and identify where is it heading, or you could also be looking to go at that point. Now, if I just looked at it and go, is this moving higher? Is it moving lower, right? Just most recently, or is it moving across, okay? It's a method of, it's a way of eliminating the mistakes, eliminate, eliminating the possible mistakes, right? So, if we're thinking that, hey, look, recently price, since the 11th right, of August, price has gone from 1.2248 or 1.2250, 
all the way down towards that 1.20 level. Price has, moved, has been moving down. If at this point, as an example, if at this point, um, you are more of a trend following trader than looking to buy towards upside would be a counter trend, right? If you're looking to sell down, then you're more, then you'll be following the trend, that recent trend towards the downside. So I use it, you could use it as a way to eliminate um, what not to do because it might be easier to just look at that short term move and know that, oh, it's been dropping. I don't want to be looking to buy it towards the upside because it'd be counter trend. Another way to look at it is that we have this channel moving right across. Let me just see if I can do that. I don't think I can do, well, okay, can do that. You can see that price has moved right across. And, you know, for me, I don't like trading within a horizontal range, right? I don't like trading within a horizontal range. I actually prefer looking at a clear direction. I prefer looking at a clear direction, either to the upside or the downside. Okay. So it looks like if you, does that help you there, Zoran? With your trend identification, look at the channels pushing towards the downside. Okay. I think that um, as a first starting point, as a first approach, look towards using the channels, right? So just join up a few lines, drag it down, well, drag it down properly, right? You could actually look at it and say, price is moving lower within that shaded area in this area. Okay, at this chart, I would go and go with buy instead of sell. So you're talking about this here. Okay, so it might not be, it might not be so much about um, identifying or feeling that you're identifying trend wrongly that that's actually good all right so it looks like it what he said it looks like it's at a support level okay so i from that little bit that i'm gathering so far um i don't think that you're having that much issues about a um trend identification more about you know identifying that support and resistance and the approach right so you know, you can see that it's moving towards the downside, but you also identify this as a good support level. And that's why you're thinking that you could buy it towards the upside. That's actually fine. That's, that's actually um, entirely okay as an approach. I would say that that would be a, you know, to put a term to it, that's what we would call a contrarian view. Right, anticipating for it to bounce off this level and buy towards upside, which could work out because it could be looking at buying at about that 1.2060 level towards that 1.21 level tight stop loss, about 30 pips or even less. Still looking at a one is to almost one is to 1.5 risk reward ratio towards the upside. So it could work and it's not wrong as well right so it's not so much about trend it's about the approach identifying you know what i feel that you're approaching it is you identified a level and you are lack of a better word predicting that price um, is going to bounce off this level i would suggest that if you are trading actively if you are managing your trades closely then try to react to the markets more than predicted, right? React to the movements rather than predicted. But if you're a bit more of a longer term um, trader, then you could actually look at this and say, all right, it's hit that level. If given that you don't have much time to look at it, you could be looking for it to bounce towards the upside, tight stop loss, a good take profit towards upside counter trend trade idea 
is fine as well. So my mantra is that, you know, there's no one method to approach the markets. There's no one method or one strategy to approach the markets. It's all based on how you are comfortable with it, right? I would always go for multiple trend following trades until it hits a level, until it bounces off a level. So more like in this case, a clear bounce before I would look to buy it up. I wouldn't be guessing that it's going to bounce at that point. Okay, so I like to trade what I see rather than trying to predict it. So I, I would be looking for the candle to form towards ooh, towards that upside before I would look to buy it up. Hope that makes sense to you there. Okay, um, fantastic, fantastic. I would, you know, I think I did the pound analysis already. But I would like to, for me, I'll wait for it to break below this 1.2040 level to look to sell it down. Bearing in mind that there's a very short-term trade towards a 1.20 level and then look to sell it down further again. All right. So I wanted to do a quick, I wanted to keep this session as a quick and short and sharp session just to make sure that you guys get the good information. Um, also, because there's no big news happening, just bear in mind, just bear in mind that look at the dollar index that it's really trading within that tight um, range. All eyes, don't, don't rush into trades. If you're looking and you're entering more than three trades a day, right? Three good time frame trades in a day you're possibly, more than that, you're possibly entering too many trades. I can tell you that today I've entered one trade. Maybe if the dollar index breaks above that 106.96 level, I might have another trade. But if not, I'm possibly not going to go into a counter trend. I'll sit there, I'll wait until it reverses back up again. Then I'll jump into trade. All right, so some things to consider there. Um, don't rush into trades. Prices, if you had a lot of trades today, prices are sitting in a very tight consolidation, shouldn't be hammering out too many trades. Okay. Um, any further questions? One more. Last one I want to show you is US Swiss franc is actually getting quite interesting. I like how it's bounced. I spoke about this many times already. When it was dropping to that 0.94 level, I was saying, hey, be careful. It's a very, very key level there onto the daily time frame. Last time it got to that point was on the 16th of March. Now it's bounced back up. I would be looking for further upside on the US Swiss franc. Um, and this upside, not so much driven by the dollar not so much driven by the Swiss franc, but likely to be more from the dollar index. All right. So I hope you had a good session. Hope you, I hope what I've shared with you makes sense and is helpful. With that, I'll probably do a quick end to the session. Thank you, Zora. You're one of my persistent fans. So I look to see you at the next session again. For now, take care, trade well, trade safe. Take care now. Bye-bye.